Kate, how did you get into tarot? I got into tarot about four years ago and I had just left my job that I'd been in for the last three years and so I was at this sort of stage in my life where I felt like everything was kind of up in the air and there was a lot of uncertainty and one of my friends was into tarot and so that kind of got me interested and so I started by buying my first deck and buying a couple of books and that's just how I got started is I was at this time of change and transition and I was starting to be more accepting of some of the more kind of metaphysical new age uh, things that were out there and so that's how I first got into tarot. And how long has it been since you got into tarot? Um, it's been at least at least four years, about four years ago that's when I first, first um, started to read tarot. And does it take very long to get good at it? Um, it? I think it really depends on how much you're willing to practice. So when I first started doing it, I was practicing every day and I was reading lots of books and it was really, it really has to do with how much you practice. So the more um, time you spend practicing with the cards, the, the quicker you will get good at it. But it did take me quite a while uh, to learn the basics of tarot and then to get comfortable um, reading for other people. That's what really uh, took a lot of time is to be able to get comfortable reading for others. Yeah. Do you need to have a certain type of personality or a gift to do tarot readings? Um, I don't really think that you do. I think anyone could actually read tarot and anyone could get really good at it. I think um, I think being naturally inquisitive is something that helps and being able to keep an open mind as well is something that um, is pretty helpful. I don't think there's any real specific personality traits, just having an open mind, being inquisitive. I think also being willing to put in a lot of time practicing um, with the cards as well is, is pretty important and have a very kind of calm, non-judgmental attitude, especially if you're reading for other people, I think is important. Do you ever worry that you're going to steer people in the wrong direction when you give a tarot reading? Yeah, I often, <laughs> I've often struggled with that. Um, and one of my biggest uh, uh, pet peeves about giving tarot readings is I feel it's so important for people to be able to tap into their own intuition and make their own decisions. And so that was one of the major um, kind of ethical concerns I had when I started doing readings for other people is I didn't want to appear to be this sort of outside expert telling people what to do with their lives. I wanted people to be able to kind of tap into their own wisdom and be able to make their own choices. And so with my tarot readings, I find uh, I like to do kind of interactive tarot reading, so I like to ask um, the person I'm reading for, I like to ask them questions and kind of get them involved so it's not necessarily just me kind of telling them what to do. Um, but there's definitely um, that fear. What was your original question? Uh, Are you, do you have a fear that you're going to steer people in the wrong direction or give them bad advice? Right. right. Um, I like to frame it, when I, when I read cards for someone, I like to uh, not so much give advice, but kind of uh, present options to them and present them with a different way of looking at a situation rather than telling them, here's what you need to do, this is what you should do. Um, so I like to basically present them with an opportunity to kind of open their minds to see different possibilities um, rather than just one direction. So I try, I try to avoid that issue by... <laughs> By, by reading that way, yeah. What do you love about tarot? Oh, um, lots of things. I love, probably one of my favorite things about tarot is collecting decks, and I have many different tarot decks, and I love seeing how each artist interprets the tarot and how they, um, you know, what their artistic uh, rendering of the tarot is. That's probably my favorite part about tarot, but when I'm reading tarot for other people, um, my favorite part is being able to connect with people, I think, and, um, and also being able to help inspire people through, through the tarot reading process. What makes an outstanding tarot reader? 
Well, I got my tarot cards read about a year ago, about a year and a half ago, and the woman who did my tarot reading, I would say, was definitely an outstanding tarot reader, and she was almost like a, kind of like a counselor, like she was very, she made me feel very calm, very at ease, and I think a lot of people when they go for a tarot reading, they're kind of on edge, and they're really nervous, and worried about what someone's going to say, and so she was really good at kind of putting me at ease, and asking me the right kinds of questions to kind of um, uh, allow me to kind of tap into my own wisdom about the situation that I was asking about. Do you remember some of the questions she asked you that you found particularly helpful? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> it was so long ago, I actually don't really remember. They were, I think they were a lot of... Um, kind of, uh, like if you're familiar with solution-focused counseling, they're kind of those kinds of questions, like solution-focused questions, like, um, well, one question was, you know, what bothers you most about this person, or what do you think you could do today to improve this situation, and those kinds of questions to kind of get me thinking in more of a positive direction. If you were to advise a new tarot reader on say three questions that they could kind of pull out of their back pocket mm -hmm. um, when they're doing a reading say if their mind goes blank what three yeah. questions would you suggest they oh, learn that's such a good question because there's so many times when you're doing a reading for someone that you your mind does go blank <laughs> and you might uh, uh, kind of struggle to find the right words one thing I like to say when that happens is I like to give myself um, a bit of time to recover and I usually say I'm just going to step back from this reading and look at it as a whole to see if any new insights come to me and that gives me a moment to kind of um, you know pull back and um, catch my breath and then there's all kinds of really good questions that you can ask to give yourself a little bit of time to kind of collect yourself but also to let that person feel like they're more involved in their reading. Um, one question I like to ask is, um, uh, well, you can ask the person what stands out to them in the reading, because sometimes you'll interpret a card and they might have a very different interpretation if they know a little bit about tarot, so you can always ask them um, what stands out to them in the reading or what sticks with them, so what feels most important um, uh, on what you said, and then you, that kind of gives you an idea of um, what to focus on in the reading, so what's really important to them or what they want to know more about. Um, and another question I really like to ask people is, what can you do today or what can you do this week that could either um, uh, help you achieve that goal or help you solve that problem? Because sometimes people think that they have to make a huge change and really it's kind of little tiny steps and changes that we make, um, you know, throughout the week that, that add up, that really make a difference. So just empowering people to, to look at a situation in that way. What's the best way to learn tarot? Well, I, I don't know if there really is one, just one good way to learn tarot. I think it probably depends on your personality type. For me, being someone who's very introverted and pretty independent, I just taught myself through um, reading books on tarot and looking at different websites online and just practicing at home with tarot cards. So I spent many hours by myself um, writing about tarot uh, and doing all the different uh, creative exercises that are in some of the tarot books. Um, so that was how I learned. And then... Um, over time I met other people that were into tarot so then we would practice with each other and then that was really helpful too. And if, if you live somewhere where there's uh, a tarot class that I think would also be a lot of fun. I've never actually taken a formal tarot class myself um, but someone who's more I think extroverted and likes to interact with people more and be around people might get more out of doing a tarot class or even um, joining a tarot group, I think that would be really helpful. And that's something that I wish I had when I was learning tarot, is like a group of people um, to get together with on a regular basis. And now with online e-courses, people can take those too, I understand. Yes, they can, yeah. And I've heard there's a lot of really good um, tarot e-courses out there 
that are really helpful. And I'm going to be coming out with one of my own pretty soon. <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> Kate, what advice would you have for someone who wants to get really good at doing readings for themselves? Um, I would say, uh, well, meditation is one really good way. Um, I think when you're doing a reading for yourself, the main issue is that sometimes your own kind of ego will get in the way of doing the reading. So you might start a tarot reading for yourself with kind of an agenda. So you want the cards to, you know, say a particular thing. And so you'll go into it with kind of a bias. Um, and so I think the most important aspect of doing a reading for yourself is to be able to kind of separate yourself from your ego. So doing a meditation right before you do the cards, um, that's what I like to do. I like to spend at least five or 10 minutes doing just a simple kind of breathing meditation to get relaxed and kind of let go of any preconceived ideas that I might have about how I want the reading to turn out. Um, and just to be able to tune into your own intuition um, is another important aspect of doing tarot readings for yourself. So I think being um, kind of tuned into your body and recognizing the different signals that your body gives um, is another important part of reading for yourself. What's the secret to being tuned into your intuition? Um, I'm not sure if there's just one secret. I think there's many. I think probably the most important thing is to be able to tune out other things that get in the way of you listening to your intuition. Because everyone has that ability to, to hear their inner voice or their higher self, but all different things get in the way, like fear, um, other people's opinions or advice, um, self-doubt, all those things get in the way. So I think probably the most important thing to being able to really tune into your intuition and um, trust it is to be able to filter out all those other things that get in the way. And I think meditation is one really good way of doing that. But I've also found creative writing to be really helpful with working through particular issues like that, such as fear and things like that. Could you say a little bit more about the creative writing? Yeah, yeah. So I find if I sit down to do a tarot reading for myself um, and I'm trying to kind of get some perspective on an issue, um, Sometimes it helps, especially if I'm feeling upset about something or really nervous or anxious about a particular issue, I'll do some writing around it. So I'll just, I like to do just stream of consciousness writing. So I'll just get a piece of paper out and a pen and just write everything that's going through my head and um, all the things I'm afraid of, uh, kind of everything that's going through my mind. And once it's out on paper, it's easy to kind of laugh at ourselves and see how <laughs> ridiculous our minds really are. And that just helps me get all my kind of craziness that's going on in my mind out on paper and then just move it to the side. And that kind of, that's a kind of a clearing, kind of cleansing process for me. And then I can do my tarot reading without having that kind of coming in and distracting me and pulling me away from myself. <laughs> Is intuition the same as gut feeling? Uh, yeah, it is. And it's funny because a lot of people get their gut feeling or their intuition uh, confused with fear and anxiety. So I know a lot of really gifted intuitives and psychics who are very sensitive, but they also might be a little bit neurotic. And so sometimes they mistake that sense of fear or anxiety, like their own, you know, their own issues or their own fears. Um, for sensing something psychically or being intuitive. And so <laughs> and uh, so that can be really confusing. So I think that's one major um, major uh, issue that a lot of intuitives have is being able to separate their own stuff from actually um, you know sensing things and being intuitive. What was your original question? Is intuition the same as gut feeling? The same as gut feeling. Um, I would say yes, but sometimes your gut feeling is also your fear. So <laughs> sometimes you might, uh, for example, uh, have an opportunity to do something and it might be something that you're really nervous about. And so you have this like gut feeling, this like, you know, a fear feeling. And sometimes it's helpful to ignore that. It's also your fear. So, 
<laughs> sometimes you might, uh, for example, uh, have an opportunity to do something and it might be something that you're really nervous about. And so you have this like gut feeling, this like, you know, a fear feeling. And sometimes it's helpful to ignore that and move past it. And sometimes it's helpful to listen to it. So intuition, you always have that. Um, there's always that kind of difficulty of, of knowing when to listen to it and when to ignore it. <laughs> so they're very similar, but I don't think they're the exact same thing. So for someone who's just developing their intuition, what advice would you give them for how to separate the fear or anxiety feelings mm -hmm. from actual intuition? Um, I think asking themselves uh, if what they're feeling has to do with their own stuff. Um, and so I think just being aware of what your own stuff is and what your phobias are, what your anxieties are, what your triggers are. I think the more you know about yourself, the more you're going to be able to differentiate between um, you know, just you being triggered by something versus actually getting legitimate, um, intuitive information. What advice would you give someone who wants to get really amazing at doing readings for other people? Oh, um, well, I would say being able to really tune into your intuition and your psychic ability, uh, I think is a, a wonderful way to be a really good tarot reader. I don't think you have to be uh, psychic to read tarot, uh, and you don't even have to be naturally intuitive to read tarot, but I think um, having a bit of intuition and being kind of sensitive in that way um, can really, I think, help you become outstanding and really kind of set you apart from other tarot readers. And I think everyone can learn how to be more intuitive, so it's not something that you're born with. Um, some people are gifted with amazing ability, amazing intuitive and psychic abilities, but we all have them and it's just a matter of, um, you know, learning to listen to them and learning to use them. So I would say that, um, uh, what was the original question again? What, what advice would you give someone who wants to get really amazing really at doing amazing. readings for other people? For other people, I would say take a course in either, um, Take some kind of psychic or intuitive course, whether it's something in your community or something that you do online. Um, anything to help you kind of open up your psychic awareness and believe in yourself as, as a natural intuitive is important. I think the number one thing that was the most important for me was taking a course in counseling. And that really helped me become a more uh, compassionate reader. And it helped me actually listen to my clients and um, understand kind of what they were going through and what they were needing from me as a reader and to be able to deliver the information that I was getting from their cards in a way that was um, empowering and in a way that was, you know, felt good for them. That was, the, I would say that is probably the best piece of advice I could give anyone who's wanting to read for other people is to take a couple of counseling courses. And I just did a couple courses through my community, so they weren't like professional level counseling. But um, that really helped me a lot.